listening to the Naked Bible Podcast. To support this podcast, go to www.nakedbibleblog.com. Welcome back to the Naked Bible Podcast. The last episode of the podcast dealt with the need to tap into the intellectual output of the ancient Mediterranean world, the Bible's own context, in order to start thinking the thoughts of the biblical writers. Specifically, the literature of the ancient Near East and the Second Temple Hellenistic Judaism period was the primary means at our disposal to become informed by the worldview of the biblical writers of the Old and New Testaments. I posted some links to academic books designed to be guides to this literature. In this episode, I want to take this recommendation further by directing listeners to the best volumes and websites for English translations of all this material. We'll start with the civilizations that give the Old Testament its context, the civilizations of the ancient Near East. In the episode that follows this one, we'll cover the Second Temple period, the primary context for the New Testament. In what follows in this episode, I'll first recommend books, whether hard copy or digital form, that must be purchased. After those recommendations, I'll suggest some websites that have free content for text and English translation. So let's start with books. The designation Ancient Near East is used to describe the civilizations of ancient Egypt, Mesopotamia, Anatolia, which is Asia Minor or what would now be considered Turkey, Canaan, Syria, uh, which is another is a more modern term for ancient Ugarit, and Phoenicia, which was also known as Byblos or associated with Byblos, and the Transjordanian countries of Moab, Ammon, and Edom. Mesopotamia is further broken down into the Sumerian, Babylonian, and Assyrian civilizations. And Anatolia is primarily describing the Hittite civilization. All of these cultures, especially Egypt, Sumer, Babylon, Assyria, and Ugarit, produced a good deal of literature, including everything from economic receipts, bills of sale, laws, personal letters, mythic epics, religious rituals, theological texts, and poetry about love and human suffering. But how can an English reader get into all that? Well, there are a number of print volumes that provide a broad exposure to this literature in English translation. I'll list the ones I recommend and whether those volumes are also available in digital form from Logos Bible Software whose website is www.logos.com. You can check the links for all of these resources, whether they're books or digital form, at the Bibliography and Resources tab at the Naked Bible Podcast website, and that is www.nakedbiblepodcast.com. First, there are general collections that include texts from all these cultures, not just focusing on one civilization. First, there's something called the Context of Scripture, or what's known in the field as COS, C-O-S. This is a three-volume set. It's also available in digital form through Logos. Now, COS is currently considered the most up-to-date academic English anthology for ancient Near Eastern texts. Since it covers all the civilizations, it is by definition selective in what it includes and therefore not exhaustive. But it gives you literary uh, examples, works, from civilizations all across the ancient Near East. Second, there's Pritchard's Ancient Near Eastern Texts known as A-N-E-T. This is a one-volume edition of texts uh, that is sold in hard copy, and it's pretty expensive, but you can get the material now in a two-volume paperback set that's much cheaper. Now, A-N-E-T also has an accompanying volume of pictures, but we're concerned right now with just the primary texts. A-N-E-T is also available digitally through Logos. Like Kos, the context of scripture, it is selective and covers fewer texts than Kos does because it's only one volume as opposed to 
uh, three volumes uh, for the context of Scripture. Before Kos came along, this was the industry standard volume for ancient Near Eastern texts in translation. Third, there's the Society of Biblical Literature's series called Writings from the Ancient World. This is a 16-volume set. It's only available as a set if you want it digitally from Logos, but you can buy individual volumes in hard copy form on sites like Amazon.com. Now, some of the volumes in the set would include uh, Letters from Ancient Egypt. That's one volume. There's a volume on Hittite myths. There's another one called Letters from Early Mesopotamia. Another one called Texts from the Amarna Period in Egypt. Now, the Amarna Period was the period of, of Akhenaten, uh, late, uh, later New Kingdom. There's Hittite diplomatic texts, Mesopotamian chronicles, ritual and cult at Ugarit, Hittite prayers, text from the Pyramid Age, and so on and so forth. There's also a volume that covers the Ugaritic uh, epic material called Ugaritic Narrative Poetry. Again, Writings from the Ancient World is 16 volumes in all, and the only way you can get individual volumes is to buy them uh, in book form. Now those are the general collections. Let's move now to individual civilizations. We'll take Ancient Egypt first. Aside from the volumes in the SBL Writings in the Ancient World series, there are several anthologies just of Egyptian literature. One is the three-volume set by Miriam Lichtheim, an Egyptologist. This is called Ancient Egyptian Literature, Volume 1, 2, and 3. These are available in digital form from Lagos, and they're available in paperback uh, from a site like Amazon, and they're not expensive. They're divided between the Old and Middle Kingdom, that's Volume 1, then the New Kingdom, and then the Late Period. Another example is Ancient Egyptian Literature, an anthology by John L. Foster. Again, it's a one-volume work, so uh, again, its coverage might not be as much as Lick Time, three volumes in paperback, but it is another well-known anthology. Thirdly, there's another anthology called The Literature of Ancient Egypt, and this is by several Egyptologists, William Kelly Simpson from Yale, Robert Rittner, Vincent Tobin, and retired professor Edward Wente from the University of Chicago. It is just what it sounds like, an anthology. It includes stories, uh, instructions, which is what we would call uh, Egyptian wisdom literature, there are monumental inscriptions, autobiographies, poetry. It's a pretty broad spectrum. If you get that, make sure you get the latest edition, the third edition. If we move now to Mesopotamia, the best set here that focuses just on Mesopotamian material, Sumerian material, Babylonian material, Assyrian material, and again, other than Sumerian, the rest of that stuff is in the language known as Akkadian. The best set here is the two-volume set called Before the Muses, an anthology of Akkadian literature by Benjamin R. Foster. Now that set is quite exhaustive. It's very good. It's something that scholars would use. There is actually a distillation of that set, the two-volume set, into one paperback volume. Uh, it's the the one volume uh, work is called From Distant Days: Myths, Tales, and Poetry of Ancient Mesopotamia, and the material in that is sort of pulled from the larger set before the Muses. It's also by Benjamin R. Foster, so he selected the major things from the two volume set to put into the one volume set. I used that book uh, for the Mesopotamia class. Uh, I taught at the local university. Another uh, one-volume work is Stephanie Daly's Myths from Mesopotamia. This was published in 1989. Stephanie Daly is a well-known scholar in Mesopotamian studies. Uh, it's a nice little paperback, not expensive at all, and it'll cover all the major creation epics, the flood epics, Gilgamesh, that sort of thing. I should also mention 
Thor killed Jakobsen's The Harps That Once. This is a work on uh, subtitled Sumerian Poetry in Translation. Uh, Jakobsen was a well-known Sumerian scholar, and this book focuses on the poetic epic myths in uh, Sumerian literature. Uh, again, creation epics and that sort of thing. Uh, so it it's it's somewhat dated, but Jakobsen was a major figure in Sumerian studies, and so it's well worthwhile to have his translations. Ugaritic literature, we can focus on that in particular. Uh, aside from the volume in the writings from the Ancient World series, which is by Simon Parker and entitled Ugaritic Narrative Poetry, aside from that, there are three other books that provide English translations of the Ugaritic epic material, things like the Baal cycle, the Carrot epic, or the Achat cycle. These are Nicholas Wyatt's Religious Texts from Ugarit. That's also available digitally from Lagos. John C. L. Gibson's Canaanite Myths and Legends, also available from Lagos, and that volume includes uh, a number of the Rephaim texts as well, uh, in addition to the, the major epics. And finally, there's Michael Coogan and Mark Smith, their volume called Stories from Ancient Canaan, the second edition. Again, if you get that work, make sure you get the second edition. Now, for the literature produced by the Hittites, the Phoenicians, the Moabites, you know, all the smaller Transjordanian civilizations, the best thing you can do is get access to Kos, Context of Scripture, or ANET, Ancient Near Eastern Texts. There are no separate works that really uh, focus specifically on these smaller civilizations. Let's talk a little bit about websites uh, where you can get access to material for free. Now, naturally, online resources are, as you'd expect, not as good as the published volumes. For one thing, they're often quite old, they're in public domain, and so you don't get the benefit of the most recent research and the results of that reflected in uh, newer, more recent translations. You're also dependent on your own searching in most cases, since these websites may or may not have the material organized in any coherent way and just require you to put in your own search terms to find whatever it is they have. But there's still a lot of good stuff there, so I don't want you to be uh, completely discouraged about that. You'd be surprised at what's available. I'm going to give you uh, three sites that are useful for accessing primary text for free in the public domain. One is a site called Etana. That's E-T-A-N-A. -A. It stands for Electronic Tools in the, and Ancient Near East Archives. Uh, www.etana.org. What you do when you go to this website, you select Core Texts from the tabs at the top and then type in a subject word or a keyword in advanced search. For instance, if I type in Egypt, I would find things like James Henry Breasted's five-volume work on ancient records of Egypt. These are historical documents from all periods of ancient uh, Egyptian history. And there are things in Breasted that aren't published in any other work, either in public domain or the recent uh, collections. Um, this was a very important set and actually still is. Uh, Breasted was uh, an Egyptologist, the Egyptologist at the University of Chicago for many years. If I put in the keyword translation, I get things like Leonard King's two-volume work, The Seven Tablets of Creation. That's an old, done you know, in the 19-teens, or just after the turn of you know, the 1900s. It's an old translation of Babylonian creation stories. Now, while you're on the Itana website, you may want to also click on the tab that says Abzu. That's A-B-Z-U. These are free academic books collected from the web that cover all sorts of topics about the ancient Near East. Now, you won't find core texts on Abzu. You'd have to use the Itana search engine for that. But you will find thousands of books about the ancient Near East that are free along with lots of other links to other sites, again, just depending on your search terms. Thirdly, on the Etana website, there's also a news site known as eTact, that's E-T-A-C-T. 
It's just another tab on the Atana website. And this site is, as its own you know, wording uh, explains, the site aims to be the definitive repository on the web for translations of Akkadian materials. So if you're on the Etana website, click on eTact, click on that tab, and then you'll be taken to a page where you can browse that particular collection by category. Now the second major site I want to direct you to is the Internet Sacred Texts Archive. And make sure you uh, access the index. And you can do that again by going up to nakedbiblepodcast.com, clicking on Bibliography and Resources, and then hitting the link for Internet Sacred Texts Archive. This is really uh, quite a good site in that someone, whoever runs this site, has really taken the time, it's been up for years, to cull the web for uh, English translations of all sorts of ancient texts, not just the ancient Near East. Uh, and, and the best part about it is it's actually given some sort of coherent topical arrangement so that it's not something that you're totally uh, dependent on searching uh, with your own keywords. So I highly recommend that uh, to get to public domain material and websites that have uh, English translations of these uh, ancient Near Eastern texts on them. Third, there's something called the Internet Archive. The Internet Archive is an archive of free public domain resources on basically any subject that you can think of. It's not just about ancient studies. It's about anything that's available for free, either public domain or available for free otherwise. The Internet Archive. So when, once you're on that page, you search for key terms and you'll get access to books that have been scanned and made available uh, because they're in public domain or converted to PDF. Uh, it, it's a very useful website, and you'll find lots of material on that. I hope this is helpful. Uh, just remember to visit www.nakedbiblepodcast.com and then click on the Bibliography and Resources tab for links to all the resources I described here. In the next episode that follows, we'll take a look at the same sorts of resources for the Second Temple period, the primary context for the New Testament. Thanks for listening to the Naked Bible Podcast. To support this podcast, visit www.nakedbibleblog.com. To learn more about Dr. Heiser's other websites and blogs, go to www.drmsh.com.